Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today I'm going to answer a question that Sam Newton had in the ClickFunnels uh, official group here. He actually reached out to me and we chatted a little bit. And what he's looking for is the ability to have two pop-ups on the page. Uh, one for an exit pop, and then one where he wants to put the order form on it. And one of the suggestions that ClickFunnels had is that you could use the actual click pops on the page. So let's take a look at that because I got three or four different ways to show you on how you can set this up. And so how you set up a click pop on a page is you have to create a separate page. And then when you have a button here on this page, you would click on it and it would say to open up that click pop and in order to get the click pop codes you'd be on a different page that you just created with an order form on it let's say you come in here and you say get your click pop code and i've got all kinds of videos on how to do this you grab this code you got to bust it up a little bit but i got a bunch of different videos on youtube that show you exactly how to use click pops the problem with the click pop though is so we got our our order form page that we're on well the click pop has to be a separate page so it had to be a separate order form page with the order form on it, which would then show up essentially as a pop-up on your page. And I don't think that's really what we're looking for here. And I've used click pops for a lot of things, especially legal pages and privacy policies and that kind of stuff. I'm not really a huge fan of them. They're a little difficult to set up. And for the longest time, the code that ClickFunnels had in there actually didn't even work right. But so that's not the direction I'm going to go today. The way I'm going to go today is let me make sure I get into the right place. And again, what he was looking for was to have the ability to have an exit pop. So when you put your mouse off the top of the screen, that this exit pop will show up and then also to have an order form. So while that's loading up, let's go over here and let's take a look at this and let's load it up because right now the way I have it set, it should be so that we have an exit pop. So there you go. And here's the content I put in there for it to show on your exit. But then you can also have it show an order form. So we click on this here and there it opened up the pop-up, the exact same pop-up, but this time I had it showing us the order form. But now there's a problem with this way as well in that if I open up the order form first, because what I have is I got two sections inside of that pop-up and I'll show you that in a second here. I got the one that had that one line of text and then I have another one, I should say two rows. I got the row with the one line of text and another row with this order form in it. And so with a little bit of JavaScript code, I just say, if you click on this button, hide the text for the exit and show the order form row. But the problem is then when you go to exit, the order form pops up. Now that may be okay. That may be exactly what you want, thinking that once they've seen the order form and they try to exit, you want to have one more shot of getting that order form in front of them. And of course, you'd have some sort of hook at the top here and story and message that would get them to want to fill out the order form. But I didn't necessarily care for that way of doing it. So then I had a couple other thoughts on this, and this is stuff I've done before, where I have like two different rows inside of a inside of the pop-up, and then when you click on button one, it'll show you row one, and you click on button two, it'll show you row two. But again, this is a situation where we're not doing an exit pop. Um, it's a situation where we got two different buttons, but we would click on this, and we have that show up, which is not what it should do. Let me see if I can get this to work right. So we got button one there we go so it'd be just this text obviously you wouldn't have this one up here and then if we close that and we click on button two now we have the button two content right here so you can put in a row with all the content that you want and then have it hide and show it based upon which button is clicked but again my favorite way of doing this really is to not use the pop-up for this at all what we're going to do is we're going to create a faux section. While well, it's a real section, we're going to create a real section that looks like a pop-up and it's going to have the order form in it and that would look like this. So we can have a slide down, we can scroll up and down on the page and I have a little button here to close it and it slides back up very nicely. I think that's the best way to do it. Plus then you can set your, your, um, 
your pop-up as an actual exit pop so that when we leave the page, this part right here for the exit pop would show, not the part below it. So let's see if the page is loaded up and it has not yet. Okay, there we go, got it working. And so let me just show you what I have on the page. We'll start off here with the very first button we were talking about, and let's just click on that. And the way I have this set up, I have this called pop-up order button. And I'm just doing that because I'm going to call it as a data title instead of using the CSS ID selector on it. And then I also have this set here to open the pop-up. So that's going to open the pop-up. And in the same thing with these two buttons over here as well, I have those both set to open the pop-up. And again, I just gave them a data title of button one and button two. And then down here at the bottom for this button, Again, I have a much longer name here, Open Faux Pop-Up Button. Put that in there. And for this one here, the difference is we wanted to have nothing happened on the page. We want to absolutely kill the code on the page. So if you put in this little text right here, it just says JavaScript colon void, and then in parentheses zero, that kills the button. You can still target it, when it's clicked on, but it doesn't do anything. And if you leave what is native in here is just a hashtag, what it'll want to do is either scroll to the top of the page or reload the page, or I forget what, I've been using this for so long, but it always caused a little bit of a problem. So now let's take a look at that pop-up that we made here. And so the way I have it set up is so that if somebody were to just go off the page, all they would see is this exit pop-up content versus the order form. Because if you remember, the first way I did this is I had an exit pop and then I had an order form. Well, let's take a look in here because I have my exit pop row and I have my pop-up order row. So we have the order form in here. So what the code is going to say is if somebody clicks on this button right here, we want this bottom row to show with the order form in it and we want this one up here to hide. But because we have this hidden right like this on page load, if somebody were just to exit, all they're going to see is this part here. So it takes the clicking of this button to cause this to hide and for the other row to show inside of the pop-up. Now for these other two buttons I put down here, how that would look is let's open up that pop-up again. Um, let me see here, show the pop-up, that's what I wanted. And we can come into our rows. And so in that case, we would do this. And I would have both of these hidden because we got the content for button one and the content for button two. So on page load, what I would do is I would hide both of these. And then when somebody clicked on one of these buttons, they clicked on button one, I would say show button, show the uh, button one content and hide the button two content. If they click on button two, just the opposite. We would hide button one and show button two on there. And so I'll show you the code on that first, and then we'll come back to the code for this button down here as the very last thing. So let's come into our tracking code. So for, again, this very first button over here, I say that if somebody clicks on this button, and again, let's take a look at this here. So it's pop-up order button. So if somebody clicks on pop-up order button, that's what this means here. So this is how you would put in a data title, data attribute. Uh, it's technically what it is. It's an attribute. So um, this is how you put it into here in jQuery. And then you go dot click function. So it says when somebody clicks on that button right there, what do we want to do? We want to pop up the order row show and pop up exit row hide. So we want to show the order form and we want to hide that exit row. And so again, if we open up our pop-up and we go to our rows, so it would, if that button is clicked on, we're going to show the order form and we're going to hide that exit row content. So it's pretty basic, but like I said, the problem with it is once the order form is showing on there, there's no way to be able to take that off and just show the exit row content if somebody were to exit. And again, like I said, that may be perfectly okay for the situation you're working on. So then the other ones below this here, 
are for these two buttons down here. And so like I said, this one is called, has a data title of button one. The lower one has a data title of button two. And again, all it does is it says pop-up button one row, which again is what we had inside of the pop-up here. We had manage our rows here. So we had pop-up button one row, pop-up button two row. So here we say pop-up button two row should show when you click on button number two. So again, that's pretty simple. But again, like I said, how I would do this, I would set it up so that both of these were hidden on page load and then I would show and hide them depending on which button pops up. Because again, the reason why you want to make sure you hide the other one is because once we say show, it's going to continue to show on the page. Just like we did with the thank you form, that continue. I'm sorry, the order form, that continued to show on the page. Well, this stuff here, well, this right there, that would continue to show on the page until we tell it to hide. So you always want to do a hide show on those and turn on and off exactly what you want when each one of those buttons is clicked. So now let's just close all this stuff out because that's the last of where we are really working with the pop-up because the other one, again, I built this as a section. So let me go in here first and I want to turn off my CSS. So that'll kill all the CSS right there. And then we want to show this section down at the bottom. So what I did is I just came in here, I created a new section, I gave it the data title of order form section, so we're going to be able to call it with that, and then I put a row inside of here and I gave that order form row, and then I just put in what is an icon here and I gave it the data title of close icon, and I just made it 32 pixels and uh, so it's FA times circle is what it is, so times circle is what it is, so times with you know the X sign in there. And then I just put in a headline and the rest of it here. And let me see with the section here, I made sure I got 100 pixels top and bottom. So there's enough room that you can scroll down, especially on here, to be able to see the bottom of the order form. And of course, you can fill out this order form any way you want. You can put in your bumps. You can do whatever. And it wouldn't just have to be an order form in here. You could, and it wouldn't have to be just a single column row. You could technically put in a two column row sales video of the whole thing uh, because when you when you have this scroll down you're going to see we have opacity in the background and you can see through it just like you'd be able to see through a pop-up and so again there oops went too far i just came in here and i did the background color on this entire section and i said i wanted that at 80 percent again you can set that to whatever you would like like you would do normally in a pop-up and then here I made this row 50% of the width, gave it a background color of white, and gave it uh, some rounded corners and a full black border of three pixels, just to let it stand out a little bit, which uh, you really can't see that, but you can. And then of course we got our little red circle up here. Well, right now it's not red, in, and right now, this is showing, and right now it's not where it's going to end up because right now you see it's that's enough right nows, I guess. Uh, it is down here at the bottom because I just have these two sections stacked. Oops, manage sections. I have them just stacked right on top of each other like they normally would be. And what we need to do is stick this to the top of the page. So let's go into our CSS and start working on that. In fact, Let's turn, well, actually, let's do this because I know what's going to happen when I turn on the top part. So right now, this again here, we're just in the custom CSS. And I will kill some of these here just by putting a little slash in front of there. That's not a way to create a comment that just causes a syntax error so the code can't be read. And so we got here to start off with, so let's go here, it's sitting in the middle. And then we're going to start off with position of absolute. Position of absolute says we want to take this icon and we want to put it inside of its parent element. If we said position of fixed, it would go outside the parent element and go somewhere else onto the screen. But here we want to say uh, position absolute because we want it to stay inside of its bounding element, its containing element, its parent element, whatever you want to call that. 
which in this case here, because we are inside of a singular column, that would be like the call inner. So the class of call dash inner would be where we are positioning this and we're saying we want that absolutely positioned in there and you see when it did it it just kind of flipped it over here now why did it put it there because of certain defaults that are set regarding where the positioning should be so the first positioning thing we want to look at is top so we want it all the way up at the top but we want it even up even further because i suspect uh when i set up this row let me see here. Let's move this out of the way. When I set up this row, yeah, I have 20, 20 pixels of top padding there. So let me see what happens when I move that padding. Yeah, see, that's going to move up. That's why I had to go 35 pixels is because I have that top padding. But I'm going to leave that there because, again, we are inside of the call inner, which is slightly smaller than the actual row itself. So we got that 35, negative 35 pixels. So it's pushing it up 35 pixels. And then what we want to do is we want to say we want it to go to the right. So, um, so it's going to go all the way over here to the right-hand side. And if we did right of zero, again, because we got padding and stuff along the edge here, if we did right of zero, it would be slightly inside here. So we had to say negative 20 pixels, which is going to push it even further to the right. And I know my hand's going the op opposite direction of what you're seeing on my screen. But by doing what I did here with the minus 35 and the minus 20, it puts it right up here in the corner. What you're going to see is a little hard to see, black on black and all that. So I thought, well, let's make this baby red. And so there it's a nice bright red color. You can make it any color you would like, of course. And then we said border radius of 30 pixels. I just randomly picked a number and it happened to end up absolutely looking perfect. So I said, okay, good enough. We're going to leave it there. So now what we have to do is we have to take this entire section and we have to move it up to the top of the page. And you're going to see as I do this, it's actually going to kind of come up and go behind this top bar, which is normal uh, on something like this, and that's just fine. So what we're going to do here is let me turn everything off by killing it with a syntax error. And let's take that out, and then we'll take this out. Okay, so this is our order form section down here. And in this case here, we're going to say we want position of fixed. Now, technically, could we use position of absolute? We could, but I want it to be in a fixed position on the screen all the time. So we're saying position of fixed. And you notice at this point here, it didn't move unlike the, uh, the, the close icon did move. In this case, it didn't. So what we have to say is we want this at top of zero. So now it took it all the way up to the top of the viewport. And so at the top of it, so I guess it didn't go up behind here. So the top of it is now right up here. So take the entire section and move it up to the top of the page. And then we have to say that we want this section though to be 100% of the viewport height. And the reason why is because if we don't do that, we're not able to scroll down. So these next two lines here, the height and the overflow of Y, gives us the ability to scroll down this page now. Because if it wasn't for those two lines of code, we couldn't scroll, so we couldn't see the bottom of the form. So the height of 100% of the viewport height combined with overflow Y, Y is your up and down direction, of auto and important, you need the important in there because it's overriding where it's trying to turn the overflow off in another place in the code. So we need to put in the important in order for it to take precedent and override the rest of the code. And therefore, that's what we get is the ability to have it here. So again, what we need to do, we need to make sure we come in and we need to hide that at first because again, we want it to act like a pop-up and just pop up on the page for us. So let us save our code one more time and we will reload the page. So again, you saw the other ones ad nauseum here, which again, I'm not a huge fan of uh, these other, uh, well, this one here, these the two buttons here or two different actions that shows different content inside of the pop-up. I use that all the time, especially in membership sites. Um, so I'll say, if we're showing badges, we'll show a certain amount of content inside of that pop-up, 
Whereas if we're showing some sort of a, a milestone on the journey that they achieved, we'll show different content inside of the pop-up, but we'll always have it just open the pop-up and that'll be inside of there. But here's, uh, here's the best part though, like I said, is you just do this, slides down, you can set your opacity, you can set your size, you can honestly make this pop-up look like anything you want on your page and with a couple lines of CSS, and I guess the thing I did not show you then, see, I still have the exit pop turned on. Um, the thing I didn't show you is the code that actually makes that work. So we have here um, open faux pop-up button, which is the um, data title for this button right here. So open faux pop-up button. Like everything before, we did a click function. So when you click on that button, What's it going to do is going to take that order form section that we were just working on and it says it's going to slide it down. Now there's a lot of different ways in, in jQuery that you can show things. You can just do a hide and show like we did up above here if you just want it turned off on and off real quick. You can do a toggle so it'll go back and forth really quick, but you can also slide things in. Let me slide them down, up and down, and you can also fade them in and out as well. So what we're saying here is we're going to slide it down from the top over half a second, and then when somebody clicks on the, the icon right there, we're going to have that thing slide back up over half a second. So it, I think it gives it a pretty nice little effect there, sliding down and then sliding back up again. So I think that is it. I think I have covered everything I wanted to. So if you got any questions, just let me know.